welcome back to a new video lecture and in this lecture we discuss a new topic and that is the different terms is related with the movement of water in an aquifer so here we discuss about the permeability and hydraulic conductivity so actually what do you mean by permeability it is the measure of the ability of a porous material to allow fluids to pass through it so if you have a material and which allows the water to or the fluids to pass through it so that is called the permeability the capacity of a rock to transmit fluid some other if you define in other words the capacity how much it can hold down to transmit the fluid through it how much it allows it to allow the fluid to pass through it likewise you can define the high permeability will allow fluids to move rapidly through rocks it means that if the permeability is in uh, is very high it means the fluids can pass through that particular rocks very fast permeability is affected by the pressure in a rock the permeability of a medium is related to the porosity but also to the shapes of the pores in the medium and their level of connectedness so actually this permeability is also connected with the term porosity and it also depends upon the different shapes of the pores how this that, that that also will influence the permeability the unit of measure that is darcy it can be defined in this with the capacity of actually this permeability is measured in terms of this darcy and it can be defined in this way the capacity of rock 1 cm length and if it is 1 cm square centimeter square cross section area to allow a flow of 1 cm cube per second at one atmosphere difference so if you want to define or we can define this uh, measurement of this darcy in this way also okay taking considering 1 cm length and also 1 cm square cross section area for a flow of 1 cm cube per second and if you are give, uh, giving one atmospheric difference or pressure so that's the term then the permeability and the rocks in formation with large grains is the permeability is high and the flow rate larger the permeability in the horizontal direction is controlled by the large grains so if the particle sizes are very much large the permeability also will be high and the flow rate also will be high so here you can see the uh, session that is a high permeability and or, or you can observe from this the no pore spaces actually in this cases there is no spaces are provided here and here you can observe unconnected pore spaces and here connected pore spaces so some gaps are provided at this end and if you observe here this no pore spaces the non porous and non permeable actually and the second case it is porous but non permeable the flow is very or the it is actually non permeable actually but in the last case you can observe porous and permeable so nammal ivada kandirikkunna moonu cases aanu adhayathu pore space inde case etratholam spacing karyangal provide ipo first case nokkiyanal there is no pore spaces adhayathu space o karyangal onnum provide cheyadattilla indirna aduthelekku varumba korchu adutha last stage ilekku varumba thekkum connected some more spaces are provided due to this shape actually appo anganeyulla last case like namukku nokkiyal adu porous um adu pole thane permeable um means the water flow is very smooth actually so that's the case then the some of the factors which influence the permeability that is first one is particle size the second one is impurities in the water and the next one is void ratio degree of saturation adsorbed water entrapped air and organic matter so some of the important fact is which influence the permeability or some variations or likewise some changes can happen first one is particle size the coefficient of permeability is directly proportional to the square of the particle size so this term this coefficient of permeability it is directly means if the particle size increase the permeability value or coefficient of permeability value also will increase so the permeability of coarse grained soil is very large as compared to that of fine grained soils so when you compare this coarse grained and fine grain fine grain means the size will be very less when compared with the coarse grain so its permeability is very large okay the second factor is the impurities in water any foreign mat matter in which in water has a tendency to plug the flow passage and reduce the effective voids 
So this if some impurities are also involved in the water that also can influence the permeability. Then the void ratio for a given soil the greater void ratio the higher the value of coefficient of permeability. As the value of void ratio increases the permeability value or the coefficient of permeability value also will increase. Then degree of saturation if the soil is not fully saturated it contains air pockets means some gaps will be there if it is not fully saturated. The permeability is reduced due to the presence of air which causes a blockage to the passage of water means if some presence of air or some voids are there or some voids are there it can create some block means the transfer of water will be blocked actually or the permeability will be reduced actually the transfer of fluids will be decreased. The permeability of a partially saturated soil is considerably small that of a fully saturated soil. So if you compare this fully saturated and partially saturated the permeability value will be very less in the case of partially saturated soil. Adsorbed water, fine grained soils have a layer of adsorbed water strongly attached to their surface. So if you consider the fine grained soils or the size very less small size particles or small size soils, uh, some a layer will be means a layer will be provided or, or a layer like an adsorbed layer will be or adsorbed water will be provided over their surface. This outside layer is not free to move under gravity. It causes an obstruction to the flow of water in the pores and hence reduce the permeability of soils. So this can also lead to uh, the value or the permeability value can be reduced means it can also decrease since this outside layer is not free to move under gravity. Due to, as the presence of gravity, gravity gravitational force in the presence of the layer movement is not So this can also create some obstruction actually. Entrapped air and organic matter, air entrapped in the soil and organic matter block the passage of water, hence permeability considered decrease. Means if any air or any voids or any anything which occupies the space which can actually block the passage of water. So which obviously it will reduce the permeability. That is the end of matter or carrying or travel means flow passage and the fluid and the flow passage and the end of the side where the obviously its value will be decreased. So you can classify this permeability of the rocks is based on the permeability means extremely permeable that is the if the value is greater than 10 and you can consider some examples as limestone, cold sandstone, pebbles and gravels then semi permeable okay it is somewhat in between actually that is 10 to 0.1 fine grained sand and loam then impermeable some examples actually with uh, respect to these values as if it is less than 0.1 you can consider this clay then compact igneous rocks likewise you can take the examples as. so this is the case related with the permeability actually one of the important property or one of the important terms related with the movement of water in an aquifer then moving on to the hydraulic conductivity another important term with respect to with this movement of water it is a qualitative measurement of flow or water is expressed in hydraulic conductivity actually we measure or we take this quantity this hydraulic quantity to to give an, a representation for the measurement of flow it is defined as the flow velocity per unit hydraulic gradient so so it is actually the in terms of mathematical expression or you can consider this flow velocity with a per unit hydraulic gradient and here you can observe or here you can check out these terms the hydraulic gradient don't get confused with these terms hydraulic gradient and hydraulic conductivity both terms are different it is the change in total head divided by the distance over which the change occurs means the total head means delta h divided by delta L that means the distance traveled. So here you can observe a diagram which will give you a clear cut idea actually. Two positions are here that is H A and H B or two position A and B two locations. So if you take the head difference that is delta H and if you take the distance that is delta L. So if you take the difference actually or if you take the ratio that you will get the hydraulic gradient. So so you'll get some more clarity from this diagram. So if you observe the water has two positions actually position A and position B and the water has hydraulic head that is pressure and 
at the location A do. The second position that is at the B. And if some water to move, a hydraulic gradient causes water to move. Means if some difference, that is the level of 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 so this hydraulic gradient will or that needs or that leads to the water to move. So you can define by Darcy's law rate of flow of groundwater through a column of saturated sand is directly proportional to the difference in hydraulic head at the end of column and inversely proportional to the length of the column. So each term is very important just directly proportional to the difference in hydraulic head that is h1 minus h2 at the end of the column and inversely proportional to the length okay so it is inversely proportional to the column and here you can observe that b equals k multiplied by capital k multiplied by h1 minus h2 divided by capital l and here k represents or capital k represents this hydraulic conductivity its unit it is very important meter per day or meter per second you can write down in any way and this v represents the specific discharge so this diagram will give you an idea regarding this two points is or two columns is with the difference that is h a minus h b or h1 minus h2 and the distance between these two columns that is going to be capital l and if you so as per the derivation that means this darcy's law it is giving this definition actually Darcy's law, which is the hydraulic gradient, conductivity defined. So, actually, the hydraulic gradient is the middle of the terms are important. And here you can observe this V equals K multiplied by H1 minus H2 divided by L. And if you consider this as a one term, that is H1 minus H2 or the by L equals small l or the hydraulic gradient, you can write down in, in this way this V equals K multiplied by L and in the case of pipe flow condition you can write down as capital Q equals area into velocity or the specific discharge and here you can write down this replace this V with the, this K into L. So Q L A that is discharge Q represents actually discharge per unit time and this is one of the equation ok and finally to calculate or to determine this hydraulic conductivity you are using different methods so the high based on this Darcy's law just you know this methods is actually some different methods is which you will work down in your geotechnical lab actually this constant head method falling head method so please go through these methods let's know you some of the names is the laboratories laboratory methods that is constant head and falling head methods is and in field measurements this large scale and a small scale methods is. and these are some some names is, that is uh, piezometer then double tube and pumped boreholes some uh, measurements in the case of field if you if you want to find out this hydraulic value or hydraulic conductivity value you use these methods below water table and above water table and here we are using some empirical approach that is correlation methods is that is pore size distribution grain size so regarding this different methods is in geotechnical lab you will work out this methods is actually this constant head and folding head methods is and you will study about this thing in your geotechnical class also so just know these methods is, means some of the experimental this laboratory methods some names is, please note down that okay so in Today's class we discussed about the important terms is the moment of water in aquifer very important terms that is permeability and hydraulic conductivity and some definitions and some important units is also we discussed. So I hope the section clear and with this we wind up today's session. Thank you and see you in the next section. Thank you.